The Quran says, you are busy piling up, calculating, developing your careers, your money, your occupation, your wealth, <coughs> until you visit the graves. Think about it. When was the last time that you went to a funeral? Was it your mother? Was it your father? Was it your grandfather? Was it your uncle? Was it your cousin? Was it your friend? Was it your wife? Was it your husband? The last time that you visited the grave, when you went to a funeral and you saw that person whom you loved that was laughing, crying, live, boasting, wealthy, educated, denying, arrogant, whatever they were. What was the demeanor of the people when you walked in that funeral home, when that person was stretched out in their last suit? What was the demeanor? Were the people cracking jokes? Were they dancing? Were they clapping and singing songs? No. Silence. Melancholy. Trauma. Why? Because every person that walked in that room, seeing that person stretched out, the first thing they thought about was not the person. The first thing they thought about was that one day, this will be me. So Allah said, Al-Hakumul all of us, all of you are engaged in running your mouths, doing your business, multiplying, buying houses, cars, business, whatever you're doing. And when you're told about God, religion, life, morality, you're saying, look, I ain't got no time for that. I ain't got no time for that. I don't want to hear that. I don't even believe in God. Matter of fact, I don't even know if I'm going to die, and if I do, maybe I'm coming back again. As a matter of fact, science is so sophisticated that I, probably, I think really that they're on the verge of being able to uh, solve the whole thing of death soon. We ain't got to die. If we got enough money, we don't even have to die. See how arrogant people can be until they visit the funeral house. And then after you go to the funeral house, if you got the guts, if, you got the, if you're able to do so, you go to the grave. And now this is another scenario. And you say to yourself, is that it? I mean, 50, 60 years, scraping, struggling, scheming, lying, stealing, fornicating, jumping up and down, begging, working, and this is the end of it? I mean, is this what's going to happen to me? Are they going to be dropping me into a, a hole in the ground? A hole in the ground, the same hole that a cat digs after it defecates. Just a little deeper. But for the same reason, the cat digs a hole because the cat has dignity, something that human beings don't seem to have. Instinctively, the cat digs a little hole, covers it up. Humans have got to be taught to do that, but it's for the same reason. So you and I, we're going into a hole a little deeper than the one the cat dug. And all the people that's crying, pulling out their hair, screaming, almost acting like they're falling in the thing with you. They want to just jump in there with you. Not really, though. You know, it's all a, it's all an act. Because ain't nobody really going to jump in there and stay in there. They don't love you that much. <laughs> and 
And then after all the shoveling, after all the shoveling get done, and they fill it up, and the, the box, you can't even see the box no more, the coffin, the coffin that cost 5000 I don't know, what they, what, they, what did they burn somebody a $5,000 coffin for? I mean, if I was a funeral director, after they left, I would dig them back up and put them in another box and take that box back. <laughs> and, and honestly, I'm telling you, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. So after all the money and all the drama, and they dig that hole and put you in there and cover you up, and everybody goes back to the place, uh, go back to mama's house or daddy's house or whoever's house and uh, you know, we cook some chicken or whatever it is and we do a little dancing and drink some scotch and forget all about that person. And then we start, we want the lawyer to come now and talk about, you know, divvying up the spoils. So if that woman who died had a husband, somebody else gonna marry him, you know that. And that man who died, you know that woman, in about a six months or a year of grieving or whatever it is, she gonna come to understand that she needs somebody else to be with, so she gonna marry somebody, so that means if his suits are still in the closet and he can fit them, who gonna wear them? So it really means that after all this time and the people walk away from that grave, it's over. What about that person in the grave? What's happening? Because you know and I know that death is almost like sleeping. Death is like sleeping. Your body is gone. Your body is dead. Your spirit is gone. But your consciousness is there. Yes, brothers and sisters, you and I are going to know when the people put us in that box and put us in the grave, we are going to know your spirit is gone. You can't shout. You can't call out. You can't say, don't leave me here. But you're going to be hearing and you're going to be seeing because that's a different kind of consciousness. But you can't move. And in that grave, this is when the real trauma is going to begin. Because there's a reason for humans to go inside the grave. If the Creator wanted to, He could have caused us to live and then disappear into the, into the atmosphere. But He didn't. He caused us to go into another womb called the tomb. You started out in the womb of your mother and you wind up in the womb of the earth called the tomb. From the womb to the tomb. This is the whole trip. And this is what you have to think about. That grave is going to be a place of drama and trauma. A place where you're going to be questioned before you're resurrected. And brothers and sisters, do you think that human beings that have the ability, human beings that have the ability to take a piece of earth, dig it up, irrigate it, put down seeds, plant corn, whatever the case might be. The corn comes up, they harvest the corn. Then after that, what happens? They cut it down, dig it up again, put new seeds in there, and what happens after that? Comes back up again. What happens in the winter? All the leaves fall off the trees and the earth goes dead. And what happens in the springtime? The water comes, generates the earth again, germinates all over again, new grass, new leaves, new flowers, new fruits. So Allah says, and a sign for them is the dead earth. After that, we give it life. And then you eat the fruits from that. So Allah says, the one who gave you life in the beginning, is he not able to give you life all over again in order to judge you? Yes, certainly. You may want to deny it because you don't want to be judged.